you would be surprised. Some of those folk learn how to say amen. And some of them do a little bit better than you do sometimes. The other thing I want to tell you is it's mighty good to be with some black folks at camp meeting. I, uh, I'm grateful to be preaching even downhill from the president of the General Conference, who's one of the greatest communicators that I've ever heard, and we thank God that he's here. Um, I'm also grateful that my wife is able to be with me today. Um, if any preacher tells you that his wife does not contribute to his ministry, give him time and his ministry will be gone. <laughs> My ministry would not be possible without my wife, and I thank God for her contribution to uh, what the Lord has been able to do. Sweetheart, stand up. If you don't say amen for my wife, I don't preach. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Now, I don't have time to do a lot of things, but there's something I need to do because I have been a youth director. Folk, that is not an easy job. It looks mighty good, and Ron Edmonds makes it look easier than most. But believe me that uh, when the joy ceases and when the limelight diffuses, there is much work to do. And when a program has gone on as well as this one has throughout this week, you may be sure that Elder Ron Edmonds has worked himself almost to death. And I think we ought to give it to the Lord to say, thank God for Elder Edmonds. <clears throat> I could say more, but there's work to do. <laughs> Let's go to work, folk. Daniel chapter 6. I know you've heard it before. I know you think you know where it's going. Bible says it's new every day. <clears throat> Listen from verse 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. I've entitled the study for today, Confused Cats and bad bureaucrats. Let's bow together as we pray. Father, there are some people who don't understand the foolishness of preaching, but I understand it more every day. A man is not able to preach without the power of the Holy Spirit. And I tremble now because our expectations are great and there's every reason to believe that that God is able now father I beg of you move me out of the way I have prepared the best that I can you've told me what to say and in some ways how to say it but now other things must be done cast Satan out of this place chase him from underneath these canopies. Push him back now. Let his angels find no place in our hearts or in this place. Let those things that divert our minds be canceled now. Let evil thoughts perish. Let minute, insignificant things fade away. And I beg of you, Father, lean to the earth and kiss it at this spot so that we today may feel thy power in a way that we have never felt it before. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Let everyone say, 
Amen. The Bible is clear. Daniel was not supposed to be here now. Some of us are not careful to read the word and read it in context. One wise man has said, text without context is pretext. To understand the Word of God, you must understand the background. And listen, Daniel was supposed to be gone. The fact is that God arranges for his children to be in the right place at the right time. If you follow God, you don't have to worry about where you'll have to be. In fact, sometimes God will send you into some places that don't feel right, that, that don't seem to match who you are and what you are about, but just do what God said. The fact is that God will not allow the limelight to rest long upon evil people. You're not listening to me. I've heard people say, if I could just get to the White House. Well, it didn't work for Bill Clinton. It probably wouldn't work for you. The fact is that God does not lift people out of obscurity to put them in the limelight until he can trust them. And if God can't trust you in the dark, he sure won't put you in the light. You're not listening to me. If God can't trust you sitting at home, choosing videos, if God can't trust your car to find home at night, if you can't tell your wife from somebody else's wife, Well, I don't have time. God will not trust you in the light if he can't trust you in the dark. And God knows us better than we know ourselves. But he looked at a man named Daniel and his friends, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, found them when he could trust them with what they ate. Went to the king's palace. King said, eat this stuff looked on the king's table there were things there that they had never seen before if there had been caviar it would have been there if there was pheasant under glass it would have been there if there was steak chateaubriand it would have been there if there were wild fowls to be had they would have been there but daniel and the boy said give us beans and rice we'll be all right Man say, you can't eat that, you'll get skinny. He said, watch it, we've been eating it a long time now. Some of you black folk ought to say amen. Long time before you had that money, you had some beans and rice. And we have done all right, haven't we? After you run out of all that stuff that you can't pronounce that you put in your microwave. Don't fool with me, my gun is loaded. You can't microwave beans, but I tell you what, when they get ready, are you listening to me? After all that stuff is gone, when you come down to, to eating grits again. I don't mean eating grits after a long time. I'm talking about you ate them once, you heat them up and fry them again and eat them. Ask your parents, they'll tell you about that. Simple food. You see, some folk don't understand how God has brought us thus far. Long time ago when we used to cook for the slave masters, they wanted the collard greens, but they didn't want the pot liquor. God arranged that all the vitamins were in the pot liquor. And the heels of the cornbread are still the best part of the cornbread. You're not praying with me. Give us simple food, they said. And so when they had finished eating their simple food, not only were their bodies better than everybody else's bodies, but when they spoke the language of the Babylonian kingdom, they spoke it with the same cadence and the same nuance. And they conjugated the verbs correctly. And they even spoke with a little dialect that sounded like they had been in the kingdom forever. And they said, how in the world can you learn so fast? They say, because God helps us when we eat beans. If God can trust you with beans, he can trust you. Are you still with me? That is how they got to the plain of Dura. 
where a king refused to allow his kingdom to pass off of the, sp the sphere of existence. And instead of making a, a big, gigantic statue that was made of all of those different kinds of elements, he made one of gold, which is to suggest that he taunted God and said, you are wrong. My kingdom will last forever. But when people went home from that day on the plain of Dura, they did not go home talking about a big gold statue. They went home talking about a folk man who walked in a furnace who was not put there. If God can trust you with beans, he'll let you be in a furnace for him. And every now and then, Jesus will walk with you in your fire. All of that had already transpired. Ellen White said that after those things had transpired, Daniel found himself with a 50-year vacation. He had retired. It was over. The man was through, took down his shingle, wrapped himself, went on back home and said, I've had a good ministry. But there came a man named Belshazzar who had the temerity in his drunken state to tell them to bring the vessels that belonged to the temple of God and let me drink wine out of them. You better watch out how you fool with God. In the middle of their drunken stupor, a bloodless hand reached out of the sleeve of night. That's how the preachers always like to say it. And scratched on the wall fiery words that said, Your kingdom has been weighed in the balances, and you have been found wanting. As he spoke, Cyrus stopped the water of the Euphrates, came under the walls of Babylon, and took over the kingdom and gave it to the kingdom of Medes and the Persians. God is not mocked. You sow it, you'll reap it. One preacher said, boomerang. That's not my sermon, but you ought to think about it. Whatever you do to somebody else is coming back. And you know, Jesus is coming soon. You don't have long to reap what you sow now. Long time ago, you used to do people in, and 10 years later, it'd come back. I don't believe we got 10 years. You do somebody in now, it'll boom, jump right back on you. Huh? Y'all mighty quiet. <laughs> when, when that message was scrawled on the wall, the queen mother said to Belshazzar, you don't know what that means, do you? He said, uh-uh. <laughs> See, when something goes to scratching on the wall, I don't care how drunk you are, you can get sober. <laughs> you try it at home. You let something start scratching words on your wall at home and see, don't you get sober. It'll cure you of any drunkenness. The man woke up, what's wrong? What's happening? Queen Mother said, call Daniel. Said, Daniel? Who's that? Say, you remember him. That one with the Hebrew boy and fiery furnace and that one who used to eat beans and stuff. Call him. He can tell you what the dream means and he can tell you what words mean. So out of a half century, of retirement, they brought old Daniel back. Ellen White describes when the man got up and got himself back together and kind of checked see how he's looking. So let me go on back in there. But once he got in there, it came back to him like riding a bicycle. You may quit, but it'll come back to you. And he stood up in there and said, oh yeah, I know what that says, King. But before he told him, you read it in the Bible, he said, look, you messed up, you know. <laughs> see, when you retire, you don't have to worry about the folk paying you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what them words mean, but before I tell you, you messed up. I see what you've been doing in here. You drinking out of God's vessels, man. You ain't got enough music to drown that out. You can have women dancing all around this place half naked, but if God gets mad at you, he'll shake this place down. In fact, I got a feeling that God is working on your stuff right now. And then told him what the writing meant on the wall. Now Daniel disappears and you think he's gone, but if God loves you and if God knows you and if you are true and faithful to God, you do not pass off the scene of action. The Bible says even after you die, your works follow you. When you serve the Lord, you don't disappear. So now there comes a new kingdom. After Cyrus opened up the, the Euphrates and after they had taken over the kingdom, there came Darius to the throne. And Darius was not so kind as Cyrus. In fact, there would come eventually false Smerdis who would tear down the places that Cyrus had built up. This kingdom was turning itself away from God again. But somehow, when Darius set up his kingdom, he broke it into satrapsies, satraps they were called, 
and he had 120 princes and three presidents. And guess who he called? Daniel. And you know now, you act like folk were way different then. Incidentally, anything in the Old Testament probably resembles you. You know, we've, we've been under a strange delusion, haven't we? We've been reading the Bible, and the Lord's been good. We believed in it when we thought everybody in the Bible was white. Hallelujah. If it's in the Old Testament, it's probably looking like you. And you know we go all the way, don't we? I said, don't we? There's no real reason to leave this race of people to look for who you need, because we got it all. From porcelain white to Bible black. We got it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So these folk are all different little colors. They're sitting around and they're trying to figure out what's going on. But the fact is that God had his hand on it and, and put Daniel there. And now they told him, man, you know, that Daniel again. Every time I look up, you know, why don't that guy retire? When he going to get enough? I mean, he was in Babylon, wasn't he? Nebuchadnezzar stuff. You know, then he going to pick up again with Belshazzar. Now we get a new kingdom. You mean, why we got to bring people from the old stuff? I thought this was going to be something new. But the king didn't listen to him. In fact, the Bible says that the king was thinking about promoting Daniel to the first of the presidents. Now stick with me, folks, because I'm going to tell you something that somehow we forget from time to time. Why are we so cast in the last four or five hundred years of black history? Why do we sit around talking about what we can't do? Do you know who we are? While other people were crawling out of caves, we were throwing diamonds at each other and eating out of ivory plates. Are you listening to me? You got nerve going, we ain't ready. You speak for yourself, I'm ready. I've been ready. My granddaddy was ready. My great, 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 great granddaddy was ready. I got ready in my blood. I'm ever ready. Huh? And it is a shame, it is a shame that we have to get ourselves in a situation where one of our last hopes is a football player on trial. Now, I love OJ as much as anybody. But, but let's get real for a minute. The American system of jurisprudence says that you are innocent until you are proven guilty. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Are you still with me? And if he's innocent, if F. Lee Bailey and Alan Dershowitz can't get you off, in fact, Shapiro ain't half bad. But I'm going to wait on that. But let, let's, let's, let's do a reality check here for a moment. Because there are some folk in the Seventh-day Adventist church who take lightly abuse of women. <laughs> Talking about what you read in the Bible, it ain't in there. You can read it from kibber to kibber. Some of the Southern folk will translate that for you. And nowhere in the Bible says you ought to beat a woman. And if your mind is so mixed up that you think you've got to beat a woman, I hope the Lord give you one that grows up bigger than you. Are you still with me? Folk who do evil things in the name of the Lord, it's just not there. I'm going to leave Brother O.J. alone, but it's a shame that our young people have to rely on, on sports figures to be heroes. Man, you ain't got to rely on that. We have a heritage in the Word of God. Ellen White says that God had planned that just as powerful as Daniel was in Babylon, just as powerful as Joseph was in Egypt, that's how Israel should have been among all the rest of the nation. My Bible tells me that when Israel dropped the ball, God made a change and he said, if ye be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So that today, whatever God promised Israel, I get.
I read in the spirit of prophecy that when God got ready to show Abraham what he was going to give him, he lifted him up and showed him the whole earth, not as it was, but as it would be, and said, this all belongs to you. So today, I proclaim in your presence that I own the world. When I go to the bank and they won't let me have a MasterCard, I'll tell them to. You go on and keep my daddy's money. But I'm going to have it after a while. They don't understand what I'm talking about, but I feel better when I leave. We are mired in negativism. And the fact is that we have the greatest blessing that anyone conceivable could have because as soon as you claim the name of Jesus and as soon as you put yourself in Jesus' hands to obey him, to allow him to protect you, there is no power on the face of the earth that can stop you from being somebody. God will massage the tender synapses of your brain and make something come out of your mind. Your grade point average will climb. Your intelligence quotient will increase. You'll go to school and go to sleep at night with only a prayer and wake up and pass a test that you knew you should have failed because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But God does not bless derelict people. You're not listening to me. He feeds the birds, but he will not throw worms in their nests. I'm trying my best to preach. We have come up with a new generation of black folk who think that you can get by because you're black. Heaven will not be built on racism, nor elitism, nor pigmentism. You want me to explain that one? You know how we are. We're so silly. Everybody else closed us out. Then we get among each other and start talking about, I don't like him because he's dark. I don't like her because she light. Man, you couldn't control how you came out. The Punit Square says that that thing can pick up your aunt way back yonder. Huh? So do not, do not fear, my brother. Nor could be concerned that the Iceman hath come. The fact is that we got all kinds of colors back in our history. Black child can be any color the black child wants to be. In fact, when they're born, they're always a little lighter than they're going to be. But God ain't going to let you in because you're pretty. Or keep you out because you're ugly. Man looks on the outward appearance. God looks on the heart. And the fact is that we've come to the place now where we think you can ease by, slip in, make it through. The fact is that unless you are willing to give your life completely to Jesus, then forget about the promises that the Bible has. These promises are made to obedient people. Now, I knew that was going to get you quiet, but it's the truth anyhow. Go around here listening to Snoop Doggy Dog think God's going to bless you get in trouble and wonder why God won't reveal a text back to your mind. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, but pastor, see what you don't understand. If you listen to it, there are some good messages in rap music. Well, there's water in a sewer too. You will make it because God has determined that you'll make it. Not only that, but you've got this royal black blood flowing through your veins. Do you know who you are? Don't let nobody fool you, make you think because you're down now. You know, last 500 years don't mean nothing. Man, I come from a long line of survivors. They caught my forebears over in West Africa, snatched them out of town, put them on a ship, buried them in their own waste in a ship, some people couldn't make the trip. 
Some people couldn't take the waste. Some people couldn't get past the disease. Some of them couldn't stand it when they were separated. Some of them couldn't understand the language and gave up. Some of them didn't know how to work and fell dead. Some of the folk got so up in it that they got killed. Some of the folk didn't know how to handle the situation, so they got their minds confused and went off. My parents made it through all of that. I'm a bad somebody. I ain't even supposed to be here. And look at me. Are you still with me? The fact that you're still here is an amazing thing. And you up here telling we ain't ready. Well, speak for yourself. I'm ready. If we can handle what we already handle, we can handle this. If black people could ever get in the hands of God. <sighs> Whoa! Daniel was in God's hands, supposed to be retired. Man gone home, took down the shingle, gave up. Then Darius gets in. Let's see, you want to get some presidents. Uh, how about that fellow, Daniel? So now you know when you're getting ready to get a promotion, somebody will always be there. Well, Darius, uh, at the risk of sounding like I'm putting cold water, I believe it is necessary to have a certain homogeneousness. And, and if you recall, if you will study the history and, and by your leave, I, I would just want to suggest that I have taken the time to look back into the record. This, this man, Daniel, is a seditious, dangerous man. He sees things that we don't see and knows things that we don't know and practices things that we don't practice and I believe that his presence among us would be a negative influence and would always cause us to have fears. Let me just humbly suggest, if you would allow me, sir. Why, why don't we let him sit this one out? Perhaps from time to time on specific issues we could call him in. But please, your, your majesty, don't call in a man like this, someone who is not of our culture. <laughs> Are you still with me? May I say thank you very much. I appreciate it. Call Daniel. appreciate your erudite exposition on the history <laughs> seeing how I am the king and you are the historian <laughs> call Daniel <laughs> <laughs> if God be fire hey you remember at work when they tried to put you out oh you didn't know they did that you ain't uncovered the plot yet. Man, they working on you this weekend. They heard you gonna be up here under this tent in this heat. And they working on your stuff this weekend, see? And by the time you get back, they'll have a big old plot cooked up for you. Don't worry about the plot, just put your head in the word of God. See, when you're on God's side, you don't have to dig up the plot. Just stay with God, stay on the Lord's side. And the Lord will take care of the plot. My granddaddy was not a great philosopher, but he said, if you dig a ditch, dig two. <laughs> one for your enemy and one for you. <laughs> are you still with me? There are people who tried to take your job from you. I don't care how well educated and well prepared you are. I don't care how many credentials you have put down on your resume. The fact is that there are people who hate you because you are excellent in what you do. And God will make you excellent in what you do. And there are people who will try to tear you down. But if God is on your side, every time they pull you down, you rise up a little higher. They give you a pink slip and God converts it into a promotion and you end up being over the one who tried to pull you down. So Daniel is the president, getting ready to be the first president. Folks got together, we're going to have to do something about this. But you know, I ain't going to have no man up here praying all kind of funny times. Man don't even work like we work. Look up in here on Saturday, see if you find him. Holmes be somewhere resting or something.
to me. Let's get real. You know, I'm up in here putting in 24-7. Homes take on off. You know what I'm saying? How he going to end up being over me? I'm paying the price. And he's somewhere cooling out on set. And then where, where does my main man go three times a day? I work all day. I don't have to go home. You know what I mean? If you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Where's my man three times a day? I had a cat follow him the other day. You know, they say, they say he goes up in the top of that house. Uh, put, put, put a little asterisk there. Let me tell you about Meso Mesopotamia. In Mesopotamia, they had flat roofs. They probably don't work any better now than they did then. You know what happens. You get a flat roof, the water will eventually... Well, gravity is amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it is relentless in its desire to go down and pull other things with it. And, and so eventually come down. But they had flat roofs. And on those flat roofs, they would have one part of the house that you could have built above that had louvers in it. Daniel had them when he told him to build his house. Say, y'all fix me a place and open the louvers towards Jerusalem. He said, yeah, but what that for? I said, don't worry about what it's for. Just build it. You want to know what it's for? Stick with me. Come on up in here with me sometime. Daniel would go home third hour, sixth hour, ninth hour. Started from sunrise. See? Nine o'clock, 12 o'clock, three o'clock. Daniel, take a break. You can get more done when God is on your side taking a break. Huh? Don't ever try to get a Christian done in. Because you can work all day long and all night long. Still can't get him. Because the Lord can see around corners. <laughs> he knows your stuff while you planted it. And goes and tells them where not to be when your trap springs. See? But he take a break. Six hour, thir third hour, six hour, ninth hour, go home. Pray. Get up in the louvered place. Look towards Jerusalem, bow down before his God, and say, Father, there's tents in here. There's some serious stuff. Now, Daniel was not a preacher. Folk want to make you think everybody in the Bible is a preacher. Daniel's a businessman. Take care of business. Black enterprise. He said, but Daniel wasn't black. You go find a picture of him and show it to me. Uh, if he wasn't black, he was showing up dark. Huh? Daniel go home, pray. Folk up there looking at him. He ain't worried about him. Man, when you serve God, you have to hide. Are you still with me? Go pray. Come back to the office. Uh, pardon me, Daniel. I just want to ask. Uh, <clears throat> there were several appointments uh, that you had this morning. And the secretary was wondering uh, why you never scheduled them. Uh, third hour, sixth hour, and the ninth hour. Just wondering, was there some particular reason? He said, well, yeah, the reason is I pray. Uh, would, would his lordship, Daniel, peradventure, per allow just one other question? To whom does the president pray? Perhaps to Darius? Well, no. Well, who, if you would allow just one other qu query, If one does not pray to the highest potentate, then to whom would the president pray? He says, well, I've got friends in high place. I know somebody above the rice. <laughs> oh, OK, I understand. OK. Now they come together to lay the plot. Now, folk, let me tell you something. Anytime your enemies come together, to throw you out and all they can find on you is that you worship God. You living right. See, here's what they wanted to say in the meeting. Uh, you know, some of those times when Daniel says that he's praying, we have discovered that there's a certain sister. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know about the prayer meeting about that. Or they would have said, have you noticed the balance sheets from Daniel's department? There are certain 
economical machinations that evidence themselves. <laughs> and when we have carefully examined the fiscal record, we are caused pause. <laughs> Perhaps even though Daniel seems to be a man who is religious, methinks perhaps he is disingenuous when it comes to matters of finance. That's what they would have liked to have said. Or they would like to have said, he's not here on time. Or they would like to have said, he takes long breaks and doesn't do his job. Or they would like to have said, he doesn't know what he's about. But when God is for you, you work hard. Now, I need to pause here a minute because some of the problems that we are facing as Seventh-day Adventists now, we are facing because some of y'all ain't been working. Go in there, get the Sabbath off, and then hide in the bathroom for an hour. Shame on you. I learned something a long time ago. When I was at Oakwood College losing jobs every week, I would go to work on Monday, not tell them until the middle of the week that I needed Sabbath because I wanted to show them what I could do. Are you still with me? When everybody else would take a break, I'd be over there, you know, usually a grocery store I was working in, cutting boxes, stacking stuff. You know, I wasn't doing it mad. I was happy. Uh, Walter, would you like? Oh, yes, sir. I'd be happy to do it. Because when Friday come, I want to say, I got to take tomorrow off, but you know me. I work hard. I work enough in five days to cover seven. See? But we've been messing up so bad lately. Now stick with me. I knew you were going to get quiet. You've got, you got to put in the time. Now I'm going to steal a piece from the end, and I'm coming. When Daniel got out of the lion's den, he gave two reasons why, the Daniel, why he didn't get eaten up. Reason number two was, I haven't done you wrong, King. I haven't done you wrong. I've been faithful to my contract. Are you listening to me? Folk, it's time for Christians to start being faithful to the contract. It's gotten so now you can't even give a brother in the church a job. Because as soon as you turn your back, you know, Worry about him. Praise the Lord. Lord ain't got nothing to do with that. When you get a job and don't work, you are stealing. And I know from stealing. My father was a contractor, used to hire the brothers in the church. My brother and I would get together and weep. We said, uh oh, daddy done hired some more seven day Adventists. Every Friday, we'd see dad count out all the money. And then and when they'd leave, he says, sons, we knew the speech. We already had it. All them folk who messed up all week long painting, and we had to go and chip away what they had messed up and then repaint it, and then come to the end of the week, they get all the money, and we get the speech. <laughs> I ain't impressed with your praise the Lord stuff. Are you still with me? Yeah. Folk, we got to do work and do it well. And young people, don't you fool yourself. Nobody going to hire you. Well, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. That doesn't mean anything anymore because the last one they hired stole everything they got that wasn't nailed down. <laughs> Took coffee breaks, coffee breaks, coffee breaks, coffee breaks. Huh? Played all kind of music into place so you couldn't even work hardly. And I'm not talking about nearer my God to thee. I ain't studying about you no more because we have messed up our record. There used to be a time when if you went to an employer and said, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, they'd hire you and put you first on the list to be called up. Are you listening to me? It's time for us to wake up. Wake up. If you're going to serve God, you've got to have quality in whatever you do. Daniel had the quality. So they made up a plot and they said, I tell you what we're going to do. Let's go to the king and get him to say you can't worship nobody but him, because we know my man going to pray three times a day no matter what you do. So they go to the king. <laughs> uh, Darius, uh, we have a small entourage. We know that we are not on the royal schedule for today, but I think you will be pleased when you hear the import of what we would like to convey to the king. Uh, you may speak now. 
Uh, King, we have gone through the records of leadership as far back as history has been written. And we are able to declare without fear of contradiction that thou art the greatest king that the world has ever known. Y'all didn't think I knew how to do that, did you? Oh, King! Everywhere that men walk and everywhere that beasts trot, everywhere that birds fly and everywhere that the sun shines, your name is known among men. And your king, uh, having said that, we are wanting to ask if you would not allow us to pay homage to your person. Could we worship you just for a month? We know that you are a man who doesn't like outward display, but just let us worship you for 30 days. We know that you're a humble man who doesn't like for people to make much ado, but just allow us for our sakes. For the sake of your servants, for the sake of your kingdom, let your kingdom be made more sublime in the worship of its potentate. You got to be careful when folk flatter you. I, I, I need to say to some of the young ladies, be careful. A young man in search of certain things will tell you anything. But you know what you look like before you left home. I'm trying to be delicate. Are you still with me? You know what you look like. Don't let a man tell you lies. Honey, you know the way you are shaped. And you know you tried Jenny and it didn't work. Don't believe that man. Honey, the way your hair flows. And you know full well that he ran his fingers partially through your hair until he ran into your weave. He knows that's not yours. You know that's not yours. Don't let people lie to you. Are you listening to me? And brothers, you've got to be careful too now. These women have changed. They'll tell you lies. You know you're not muscular. Hot as it is, you've got three undershirts on now so your ribs won't show. Don't let that woman tell you you are built like a football player. Are you listening to me? Get real and, and just serve God. And incidentally, it's about time that the church change its role models in terms of who ought to be held in high esteem. Women, you have ruined Adventist men. You did it. You did it. You played around with these boy toys, and you know they don't have anything. All they got is a rented car and a suit they bought on MasterCard by the grace of God and the bleep in the machine. And you make them think that they are God's gift to womankind when some fellow who can't afford to buy any clothes yet got a pocket protector in his shirt today, but he's going to be a nuclear physicist. He may walk funny and not dress well, but if you hold on to him, his income will justify his nerdiness. You're not listening to me. And young men, shame on you too. You have ruined Adventist women. They think that all they got to do is buy a dress by a designer whose name they can't pronounce, walk funny, and here you come. You've got to help them to understand that you won't want anybody to bear your children. Marry a woman who has no morals and wonder why your children won't act right. If they act kind of like you and kind of like her, you'll be down to the jail for the rest of your days. Are you listening to me? We need to start praising young people who are trying to make something of themselves. Go on a date with that man who's in grad school. Huh? I know he got on a black jacket and brown pants, but go on a date with that man. 
who's getting an education. Go on a date with that man who works hard, but takes a shower and puts on a suit and comes to church. Go on a date with him, because he'll be the man you want to be married to. By Monday morning, the love will have ever nest. It's hard to love when your stomach is growling. You ain't listening to me. Then you come to preachers. He won't work. Was he working when you met him? Huh? Don't bring him to me. I can't fix him. You loved him broke. You said I do when he was half shiftless. Don't bring him to me think I'm going to hit him with a Bible and sprinkle holy water on him. We need to shift the paradigm and make it so that we have value for personality, that we value character. Long after your physiography, physiognomy has given in to the relentless pull of gravity, character will still be there. And believe me, I don't care how pretty she is now, gravity will take over in time. I don't care how straight and tall he walks now, in time, in time. He may walk like he's been in the Marines today, but give him time. a good man, you can love him, bent over, and bald headed. I don't have time. Are you listening to me? They flattered the king. King all flattered. He said, well, yeah, uh, tell you what, since you have spoken so kindly, and I appreciate the fact that you realize that I do not like much fanfare, but perhaps for 30 days we, we could allow it. Now, king, we would want to make it clear before it is written and we have the scribe here now, could we make it clear that uh, the corollary to this decree would be that no one can pray to anyone but, but you, your majesty? <laughs> could that be understood in the writing? Very good. Uh, would you read it back to his majesty? His majesty, it is my joy to read. <laughs> For the next 30 days, in recognition of his grand manner, his jour de vie, his panache, his charisma, his bearing, and his munificent acts, we worship our king for 30 days and him only. And in the small print, Your Honor, you will be pleased to know that I've written, anyone who is found worshiping anyone else will be put to death. Uh, and Your Honor, we, Your Majesty, could we discuss how we would like to, to put the person to death? Let it just, perhaps it could be instructive. You know, from time to time, visiting potentates will bring you wild animals. Incidentally, it was, it was a custom in those days. If you wanted to show a great king that he was so great, you would bring him a beast that perhaps shared some quality with the potentate. And so from time to time, people had gone out and had much risk to life and limb, captured the king of the beast. He is known by his family name, Philidae, Panthera Leo, king of beasts, tawny yellow, nine feet from his nose to the tip of his tail. The male is regal and photogenic with a mane that appears to be the crown of a king. The female, perhaps not so well endowed in, terms, in, endowed in terms of hair, but her musculature is made for the hunt. Remember what I said, I don't have time to comment on it, but remember what I said. Made for the hunt, and when she had gone out and caught some unfortunate beast, she would bring it back, and the pride would know its pecking order, so that the male that had already established himself as the king of the pride would not have to rush over to the kill. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
he would look to see if anyone else was going to move. Sometimes he would read on the, on the mind of another line that he thought about moving in. He'd go over and eat at leisure, and when he had finished, the others would come. Evidently, some of the satraps and some of the princes and some of the presidents had been down to look at the lions, and they said, you know some what we need to do with this Daniel? We need to drop him <laughs> in that place. The Bible says in 1 Peter that the devil is like a roaring lion. I looked at a documentary the other day, and guess what they said? Now, this is kind of tangential to the subject, but it's some good stuff. He said sometimes a lion is so cagey that he will watch a deer run by him. See the deer, see him. Freeze. And act like he doesn't know what's going on. Let the deer run by, heart beating so hard that he can almost hear it from where he is. And when the deer thinks it is safe, then and only then, Lion lifts up and in a regal manner begins to run for the deer, catches it and kills it after it thinks it's safe. I don't have time. You got to apply that one for yourself. And normally lions don't kill people. But if you put them in a little cage and come by and visit them all the time, that lion knows he ain't supposed to be in there. You can tell by the way he's pacing. Huh? You know he ain't supposed to be in there. What he's telling you is, I'm supposed to be out there. You supposed to be in there. Lion knows. But they get aggravated after a while. They can't run the range and they can't catch what they like. They got to eat what they drop in. Some old mutilated day old something other. Lions are so powerful that they will sometimes two females will go chase the same little animal. They are so powerful that they snatch it in two in one fail swoop. But now they are locked up in a den and people come by and look at them and make comments. And they're waiting on something to drop. Bible says that, that when stuff would hit, it wouldn't hit the ground. It wouldn't hit the ground. It would hit the lion's mouth. You know, and then you got to think about it. All that pecking order was working in there. Every lion couldn't run first. He had to look at my main lion over there and say. And they had to do all that before it hit the bottom. And then the main lion, Huh? They say, you know, I don't want Daniel to be demoted. <laughs> I don't want him to be embarrassed. I don't want his pay to be docked. I want that rascal dead. In fact, I don't even want him to die a uh, quick death. I want one. See that one over there? I hope he catch him. Because I've seen what that rascal can do. And so they said, let's watch him. Six o'clock came. And they put the stationers on. They said, should I stay over there all morning? I said, no, you ain't got to stay all morning because we can tell you when he's going to pray. We know he's going. So you mean you don't think he'll vary? Oh, he ain't going to vary. Don't you think he knows what we're planning? He probably does. But arrogant as he is. <laughs> now listen to me, folks, because I'm coming down your street now. See, some of us would have Work that out in our minds. Well, you know, God has given us these brains as a great tool. <laughs> There's actually no technical, mechanical requirement that one pray elevated. For after all, God is everywhere. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. And if you go to the ends of the earth, God says, I am there. Perhaps just for this 30-day period, I could close the office and pray there. Surely God would not take umbrage and a certain alteration in mechanical distribution of activity. 
because some of us have been working that show for years now. Well, see, I, I don't, I believe in God, and I, you know, I, I like the church, but see, I don't want people to think I'm strange. You know, I, I could, I could still be with the, with the ladies. You know, I could hang out with them. You know, I ain't gonna do everything they do. I'm just gonna, you know, kind of blend in. <laughs> Boy, it's so quiet in here. <laughs> so that now it's hard to tell who's a Seventh Day Adventist. Can't tell about what we eat. Even after they told you that they got some hamburger that's so polluted that if they don't fry it hot, it'll kill you. When I used to eat meat, I never tasted a hamburger that was that good. If a hamburger going to kill me, you can have all the hamburger. I remember what chicken tastes like. It hasn't left me. I can pass by somewhere now and it'll boom, come right back. I remember. But if they draw it through a pool of feces, I don't need no more chicken. <laughs> but we'll eat up, we will keep a restaurant in business. Oh, I knew it was going to be quiet. You can't tell by what we drink. And Lord knows if we were to go down there to that movie place where you rent your movies and look on that computer. Huh? You can't tell by how we dress. And I know it's hot, but some things ought not even be exposed in the heat. It's time for us to, to kind of get some continuity back. You don't take a choir seriously until they get robes. You don't take a quartet seriously until they get suits alike. You don't take an army seriously until they put on the same uniform. And you can't take a church seriously until they have some continuity. Lord help us. Lord help us. There ought to be something to be able to tell an Adventist from everybody else. You don't have to be like the old Adventists used to be, but at least be like the Bible says you ought to be. Amen. Daniel wasn't going to change a thing. Amen. Nine o'clock, praying. Amen. Nine o'clock, Daniel, praying. Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock, as usual, praying. Three o'clock. Three o'clock, praying. Go back. Hey, you think I need to watch him another day? So no, we need to watch him no more. He's going to do that every day. So what we need to do now... Let us put the brief together and present it to the king. Uh, Your Excellency, pardon us. We hate to bother you in a time that is so full of, full of felicitude. <laughs> and we know that you must be enjoying the time of worship. But there is one fly in the ointment. There is this Daniel. You remember him, don't you? Daniel doesn't dress like we dress. He doesn't eat like we eat. He's, he's really... He's not consistent with our lifestyle. He causes there to be concern among the people. They wonder who is right and who is wrong. It, it's not a good thing to happen. Now, we have warned you about that before. But now there is another issue that rises to greater significance. For you understand that Daniel has ignored, he has flaunted the will of the king. He has disobeyed with violent disregard. The order of the king and the law of the Medes and the Persians, as you well know, cannot be changed. And he has prayed to a God other than you. And we have come today to ask that the penalty be enforced, that it be inflicted, and it be done with impunity immediately. And the Bible says that the king was disturbed tried to figure out a way through the night to get Daniel off, but there was no way to get him off. And so they took this man, not a young man. We had already been retired. Not a novice. He had already been through much. They brought this man, this aged prophet, and said, we've got to put you in to the den of lions. But see, if you serve God long enough, you learn something. To live is Christ. To die is gain. Ellen White says that when John the Baptist died, he did not die upset or in a heat of rage. 
John the Baptist died in the influence of angels who pressed in close to him as his head was separated from his body. Stephen died looking up towards heaven. Jesus stood up on the right hand of God. And as he fixed his eyes on Jesus, the pain did not bother him. He did not die angry. He did not die agitated. For to live is Christ and to die is gain. If you love Jesus enough, you'll live for him or you'll die for him. It doesn't make any difference because death for Jesus is just a comma. It's not a period. It's not a colon. It's not a semicolon. It's not an end. It's just a pause. So Daniel was ready to die. He said, put me in. Now the scholars go to work and you'll forgive me as I see Daniel being dropped now. He didn't walk in. This was not a glorious walk into the den. They dropped him from above and lions looked up with all of their instincts that God had given them kicking in to full effect now. And they circled beneath and the lion who was the king of the pride placed himself strategically under the body of Daniel to wait until that old man dropped. He had been waiting a long time to eat something still alive and now it was coming. And he positioned himself, paused and opened his mouth just a little bit, waited for Daniel to drop. And the scholars don't know what that angel did when he fell. They don't know whether the angel came down and cordoned off the lions, whether God controverted instinct, because if God wanted to, with a thought from his mind that is as slight as flipping a switch on the wall, he could have changed the instinctive predilection of a lion and made him a vegetarian. I don't know about your God, but my God can do anything. Lion sitting up there waiting on meat. God said, thump. And the lion had every intention of opening his mouth. He had done it so many times before. Snubbed or smelled him and rubbed on him. And he couldn't get his mouth open. Looked at the other line. You know, can't talk, said, hmm? I said, hmm. So we'll call some of them feminist lines over there in the corner. Hmm. All night long, Daniel and Daniel just rubbing on him, keeping him warm. You know, I done had fun with y'all, but I got to go to sleep now. <laughs> Night, kitties. <laughs> Confused. Lions walking around all night trying to figure out where they can't eat him. <clears throat> Daniel sleep. Lions awake. Sun begins to rise. <clears throat> can't eat him. The king couldn't sleep. But listen to me. King had faith. <laughs> had more faith than you did. You remember that little girl who was praying for the prophet to get free from prison? Then when he came to the door, she didn't believe it was him? Don't ever pray for me if you like that. <laughs> See, have some faith when you pray. Can I hear you say amen? If you ask God for something, reach out for it. Huh? When I was a little boy, they had some old soft drink machines. You'd put a nickel in them. That shows how old I am. And when you do that, the bottle would fall from way up top. And I didn't even reach because I could hear it and I knew when it was coming out. So when the bad boy said, I said grab it. I didn't need much faith. I could hear it. I knew what it operated like. I knew the sound of the machine when it was about to spit out the soft drink. There I was sitting in the sizzling Alabama heat, 100 degrees in the shade. I knew full well that there was a bottle of soft drink with little droplets of water connecting and running down the side in random pattern. And all I had to do was wait until the rumbling was over inside the machine. 
And when I get on my knees to pray, sometimes God does not answer exactly when I pray, but I can hear the rumbling. I can feel the rumbling. I can hear the sound. It may not come when I want it to. It may not come when you want it to. It may not come when the world wants it to. But God is operating on his own time schedule. And if I just stick my hand out, it'll fall right in. Are you listening to me? Daniel prays and has faith. The Bible says he had faith. Believed all night long that he could rest in a lion's den and God would take care of him. How in the world is it that our church has become so namby-pamby? And you must allow me to say this. We got Seventh-day Adventists now who are so frightened about the end of time they want to die. The time of trouble. Man, if God could take care of us through what we've been through, we already had a time of trouble. Everybody black I know already been through a time of trouble. Are you still with me? If you haven't, you better hold on because yours is coming. God can do anything. And when the time of trouble comes, God has given us certain examples in the word of God. Ellen White says that the reason why Jesus went down with his servant, Joshua, when they marched around Jericho, and the reason why Jesus would not allow one human being to put his hands on the wall, not one soldier touched the wall, was because Jesus wanted you to see that without human help, if you just do what he tells you to do, he can bring you out of your problem. So Ellen White says, and you need to start reading it, this is some good stuff. She says if the devil had planted that wall so that its foundations reached to the center of the earth, and the top of it reached to the bowels of heaven, that Jesus would have snatched the wall down. And the same Jesus, in the time of trouble, will take care of his commandment-keeping people. Yeah. Ellen White says that just like God took care of the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, he will walk with us at the end of time. We need to quit wringing our hands and contemplating our navels and wondering how we're going to make it through. Here's the answer. You'll make it through if you're obedient. When the king goes down, Daniel, servant of the Lord, servant of the Most High God. Has your God been able to take care of you? Daniel didn't have to scream. Uh, king, morning. Some very fine animals you have down here. <laughs> this one over here got muscles all in him, you know, he's a big old bad boy. But I'm all right. Why don't you tell them to just, you know, when they get ready, lift me on up. And when they lifted Daniel up, they found that nothing was wrong with him. And he said two things. Read it. It's in verse 22. So if you've been sitting around talking about, didn't my Lord deliver Daniel? You can cross that off if you don't obey God. He says, the reason why the lions didn't eat me, number one, I was innocent before God, and number two, I didn't do you any harm, king. I was innocent before God. Now, you know that's where I'm coming. There are too many of us who are not innocent before God. I'm not talking now about stuff you did and Ask for forgiveness. God says, I'll put that in the bottom of the deepest sea. Put it behind my back and remember it no more. I'll cast it to the ends of the earth. I'll separate it as far from you as the east is from the west. And you know that represents a study in infinity. Only God could do something like that and describe it in that manner. So what Daniel was saying to us is, I haven't been perfect. But the only reason that lion didn't eat me was because I had no unconfessed sin. Now, if you think this sermon was about entertainment, you have been absolutely wrong. Because all I wanted you to do was to see yourself in your lion's den. There are some lions in your family that would like to eat you up. There are some lions in your neighborhood who would like to eat you up. There are some lions on your job who would tear you to shreds. 
there are some lions in your stack of bills. That would snatch your heart out. There are some lions in government who even now are putting together legislation that will take from us the right to come to camp meeting and sit even under a hot tent on a Sabbath day. There'll come a day when if you serve God well, you'll wish you could be back on this campground under this tent with a fan in your hand in 90 plus degrees. You'll wish you could see your brother that you used to hate in church. You'll wish you could see people who you thought you didn't like and thought you didn't like the way they walk. You wish, you wish you could get back to be with your friends and even your enemies in the church. You wish you could get back here. There are people who are making laws now. This time of trouble is about to come, but it's not time for the church to get frightened. The fearful will have their place in the lake of fire. It's not time to get scared. It's time to get serious. Folk, if you serve God, you are safe. But if you've got sin before God, if you're not innocent, some lion will eat you up. I'm sorry to get so blunt, but it's about time for us to quit sugarcoating it. I don't understand. Things ain't going right. They're going to go worse. Man, you sitting up here got stuff that God knows is in your life and you holding on to it? Well, I'm going to serve the Lord after a while. Some of us study the end time events so we can calculate as closely as we can when Jesus is coming so we know how long we can keep on sinning. Well, that's one thing you can't calculate and that's when you're going to die. There's no chart that can tell you that. The Bible says, be ye also ready for at a moment that ye think not. <laughs> That's when the son of people, you know, I, I have a great deal of respect for these people who are trying to figure out when Jesus is coming. But Ellen White says, and I can read it to you. She says, don't let that be your focus. You must understand the time of the end, but don't let it get out of perspective. You got to live right every day. And folk, I'm talking to young people now. We got some folk in here who don't classify. I don't either under the young people's act anymore. But it's time for some young people to get serious with Jesus. In fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm getting ready to make a call right now, and I'm going to flip it around from the psychological expediency because I've learned that I don't have to help God do anything. I used to make appeals, and I can make it so you'd almost fall into yes. I don't need that anymore because God is able. And there's some young person, and I need you to listen to me now, and if you haven't left yet, would you please stay? Them chocolates ain't going to taste any better five minutes early. If you haven't left yet, please stick with me. There's some young person listening to me now who has a problem that you've been struggling with for too long. And you know in your heart that all you've got to do is get serious with God. And God would take the very taste for that thing away. There's some people in here who could testify that when God gets through with your tastes, you make it so you don't even like what you thought you couldn't do without young man stopped me on the campus of Lake Region camp meeting last Sabbath. He said, Pastor, I listen to you preach and you don't know how true what you say is. He said, you've never been on dope, have you? I said, no, I haven't, praise God. He said, I praise God too. He said, I was on heroin when they brought me crack. He said, man, I thought that if you could handle heroin, you could handle anything. He said, Pastor, crack swiped me out of my own self. It snatched from me who I was, and I found myself lost. And it's only by the grace of God that I'm here today in my right mind. He said, but today, Pastor, the Lord has taken that thing from me. He said, now, I don't play with it. Stick with me. Stick with me. He said, I don't play with it. I don't go back around it. I don't play with folk who use it because I don't want to fall anymore. He said, but the Lord has brought me safe thus far. Now, I don't know what your problem is, because a lie will make you miss heaven. You're not listening to me. Well, I don't think that a lie, I don't think God in all his joy and wonder would... Folk, the Lord ain't playing. He's coming back for people who perfectly reflect the character of Jesus. And if you don't perfectly reflect Jesus today, you will get eaten by some lion.
that very one that's rubbing up against you now, God is holding him back long enough for you to get right. And I want to call you today, young person first, young person first, I want to call you to come down to the front of this tent and say, I want to give my life back to Jesus Christ. Where are you? Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Praise God for you. Some folk think young black men don't come to Jesus. Tell them they're lying. Tell them they're lying. Elder, will this go down? Will this go down to the front? I need to be closer. I'm calling for young people first because that's the hardest one to do. But there's some young person in here whose life does not reflect Christ, and you know it. And before you leave here today, you need to perfectly reflect Jesus. It does not happen by might or by power, but by the Spirit of God. In an instant, Jesus can snatch who you were and replace it with who you want to be. Jesus can take your life and put his in place of yours. Jesus can pull your record out of your book and put his in your place so that when they read under your name, it says, born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, went to a cross at 30 plus, and somehow disappeared at length. Are you listening to me? There's some young person who needs to come to Jesus today. Now there's somebody out in the back. You're too far away and you don't want folk to see you because you're afraid they'll think you've lost your mind. But in a few days from now, nobody's going to care who was cool. Nobody's going to care who looked good. The only thing that will count is were you on the Lord's side. And I want to call you today, young person, in the name of Jesus, to come down to the front and give your life back to Jesus Christ. There's somebody else who needs to move, and I call you now in the name of Jesus. Young lady, where are you? You've got plans for tonight, but you can give them up. Come to Jesus today. There's some young man who hasn't come yet. Brother, come now while there's still time. You're not here because you're slick. You're not here because you're smart. You're here because the Lord has saved you for this very moment. I call you now in the name of Jesus. There's some other young person who needs to give Jesus back their life. I call you now in Jesus' name. Get up out of your seat. Leave the spot where you are and come to Jesus right now. I need you to move right now. Church, you can keep your eyes open, but pray. Pray now. Because there's some young person's life who weighs in the balance now. And they need your prayers. Now I'm going to change this because some of us are not young anymore. But some of us old folk need to come too. Are you still with me? There's nothing so sad as a person who's lived a long time and still acting foolish. Maybe nobody else knows it but you and Jesus. But there may be somebody who doesn't fit the youth paradigm. But you need to come and give your life back to Jesus. I call you now. Would you come and join these young people? Come down to the front right this minute. Come to the front right this minute. Young person, you haven't stopped. I'm just calling everybody now. I'm just calling everybody. Somebody else who needs to come and give your life back to Jesus Christ. Praise God. There's a song that we're about to hear, but there's something that's happening now that where the Lord doesn't really need a song yet. The organ is playing softly as it ought to be playing. And there's somebody who has not moved. And somebody sitting around here thinking about everybody looking. And who cares? And who cares? If the Lord calls you, I call you in the name of Jesus right now. Young person, older person, if you've got to hobble down, if you've got to roll in a wheelchair, if Jesus called you, would you come and give your life back to him today? Give your life back to him today. I'm about to pray, but let me do one other thing. There's somebody here today who's not ready to walk down. But you got a tumult in your life. The lions are roaring all around you. And you honestly don't know how you've made it thus far. But today you want to ask the Lord to send that angel to protect you from problems as you are obedient to God. So your prayer must be twofold. Father, forgive my sins and protect me. If there's somebody who needs to join in this prayer because you have problems in your life, would you just rise to your feet right now? We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Father in heaven, I've given you the best I could. Today we've talked about a bureaucrat locked in a helter-skelter situation. Young people and people who are not so young anymore have come down to say, I need to give my life back to you. 
some lion waits for them in their specific den to tear them apart. The devil, as a roaring lion, has set a trap for them, but it cannot catch them now because they are innocent before you. In a moment, they have confessed their sin before you. And in a moment, you have kept your part of the bargain. You are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, I thank you for what you have done in the lives of people today. And I thank you for the protection that is theirs now from lions, various and sundry. Now, there are those who are standing up in the audience and they're saying, I've got some problems in my life. I've got some storm that's brewing. I've got some lion that's angry. Father, I beg of you for anyone who confesses, for anyone who's willing to allow the power of God to make a change, that you will push back the power of Satan today. And as they walk out of this place, out from under this tent or away from these canvases, that there will be a difference in their lives. Let the difference be felt over this campus as this camp meeting comes to an end in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We certainly pray that you enjoyed the sermon that was presented by evangelist Walter Pearson and may the truths that he expounded sink deeply into your hearts. That's right. And we thank you for tuning in. We do have a few announcements for you. Now, if you thought someone could benefit from that message that you just heard, there's good news. All of our sermons will be archived on our website the following day. Visit AEC.org. In addition, we want to give you an opportunity to support ministries like this one. And so on our, each page of our website, there is a button, Online Giving, and that's where you can have the opportunity to support what we're doing here. So we thank you for joining us. After a few brief messages, we will end our, our service. Please join us each night. Remember, we start at 7 o'clock a.m. and 7.30 p.m. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks for joining us. And thank you, Elder Fordham, for being with us. Thank you. Our staff is made up mostly of pastors. Uh, because we, we have pastors, because we want to keep a, sort of a spiritual control of things. You know what I mean? And, uh, and we have a good group, a good group. This is not just a flashlight. Hit the RVs, yeah. and of course, you know we gotta check up by the channel. Right, right, right. So let's strap up. Let's get ready to go. Let's rock. All right, let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. We have people on roaming patrol. Those who are on the trams, and they go. They cover the entire campground. We have two people at a time watching each gate, and the purpose is to, to, to monitor to see who's coming into the campground, who's leaving the campground. Security is here for the safety of our campers. I can't say any more than that. We're just here to keep it safe. Are you secure? You secure? You're not secure. <laughs> Somebody secure this young lady right away. The reason why they secure is because God is here and God has put us here. And so we just we're just on alert, you know. Uh, we're waiting for if any emergency happens, we all um, they listen to headquarters, and we just do what we are told. There's a bug in his eye. Get out of his eye right now. There's a bug in his eye. You got any water? I need some water, man. Any water? Water. Hey. hey. Man down, man down. Yeah, even the bugs are attacking us. Man down. We need a response immediately, man down. Well, the main thing is for safety. No, we're not police officers. Everybody knows that we're not police officers. You ain't taking me no We don't have authority to, to arrest and all that kind of stuff, but we do have the authority to call the police. We don't ever want to get there. You know what I mean? This is camp meeting. We're not here to break up fights. We don't want to break up fights. We're not here to to, to get into any physical altercations. We just want peace and safety at camp meetings. It's another one of those nights. You know, you never know what's gonna happen around here.
You gotta be ready for anything. That's when it's like, that's how we go down. Yeah. All in a day's work. We can expect something out of this tent every night. So let's just, a lot let's, of fights let's just the circle the right, perimeter. They're about to pray, they're about to pray, they're about to pray. And they're gonna attack the snack bar, you know what I'm they, saying? They're gonna descend. So we have to be in place to secure this. There's too many of them. We're gonna need backup. We're gonna need backup. Call for backup. Oh, Let's go. go. It's just too many of them, man. Wow. My leg went behind me when they dropped me. Well, you know, guys, I ran on the other side of the car. And yeah, I didn't see you in the mix, yeah. man. Yeah. Why'd you abandon us? Well, someone had to secure you guys. But we weren't secure. Exactly. Uh, because we, you we got attacked. Uh, you, turn this off. We're just here to keep it safe.